Hello and welcome to Sound Like, where today we're going to be having a look at Uprising. The guitar I'm going to be using for this video is going to be my Manson MA Evo with Sustainer. And as usual, I'm going to be breaking down the song into each part, showing you the pedals that I'm using to sound like Uprising so that you can sound like Uprising. But before we get into it, don't forget to like, share and subscribe, hit the bell to not miss out on any of my content, and let's get started. Okay, so to kick off the song, we're going to be analysing the synth intro of the song. Um, obviously, for on the record, this is a synth that's used, not a guitar, but we can avoid that kind of technicality because it's just going to be fun to play. So on the first chain, I have my whammy set to two octaves up, my blues drive, which has the gain turned all the way up, my volume pedal, and then my delay. The volume pedal comes in just before the delay, so I'm able to effectively shut that side of the signal off um, so that I can have a little bit more expression in there. It's just for kind of like kind of slight sections in there. The delay is obviously tapped into the BPM of the song and the and the level of the delay and the feedback is up there quite a lot. So you get a, a good amount of repeats and at quite a good level. It gives it this kind of crazy kind of sci-fi sound because we, we're kind of quite high up um, kind of in the octaves on the neck anyway and putting two octaves up on that um, with the whammy gives it that extra kind of sci-fi dimension to it. Contrasted heavily against the other chain which is the overdrive distortion and my Phase 90, which gives it that other kind of more traditional kind of guitar sound, but the Phase 90 kind of adds in a bit of extra kind of play in there. Putting those two together adds a lot more depth. It's a lot more interesting. It's a sound that I really enjoy. It's not a very uh, utilitarian sound. You can't really use this on a lot of things, but for kind of recreating kind of lead synth sounds, it works really well, I think. And the extra tool that I use for this sound is my sustainer on my guitar itself, so I don't have to pluck the strings, I can just kind of keep that thing going the whole way through it a little bit. It feels a little bit more like a theremin, um, but more of a, definitely much more a synth sound. I really enjoy it and it sounds like this. <laughs> There is a slightly different way of playing that intro um, where we keep the exact same settings but we play it higher up on the neck um, and we kind of and we forego the sustainer because we're going to be operating on multiple strings and that sounds like this. For that demonstration, I still used two octaves up. Um, it might sound a little bit more uh, palatable if you brought the uh, whammy down to one octave up instead of two, so it's not as dog whistly. Just if you have the, these pedals at your disposal, that's a, a few things that you can kind of play around with. The idea is there. The idea is that you're kind of playing the kind of synthy sounds. You've just got a, a few different ways of approaching it and playing around with it if you want to go with that approach. It's the approach that I much prefer it's better than not playing guitar. The alternative would either to be doing the kind of chucker um, part that I do um, it later in the song, but at that part of the song, but it gets a bit boring. The slightly more interesting way of playing along to this song at this time would be to mirror the bass line. I'll tell it up to you, I wouldn't choose to do it because it's not as dynamic and fun and engaging as the synth part, but you have options there. And that's my setup that I would strongly suggest that you go for a sounds like it. Just something that goes two octaves up, a way to maybe split the signal, get some delay, get some phase on there, and just have fun with it. So moving on, after the synth intro, we just have the bend that appears two or three times during the verse of the song because there's no guitar going on. And the sound I'm using for this is very simple. It is just my overdraft distortion, no splitting the signal, straight down the middle here on both sides equally, with a fair amount of gain and distortion on there, and the overdrive distortion control specifically is at two o'clock, so it's leaning much more towards the distortion side of things. Gives it a much more of a drive and kind of punchiest tone, a bit more direct pinpoint 
than using an overdrive tone. Why I'm using that sort of sound will come a bit more apparent later down the verse and then subsequently the chorus. The sound that I go for with this is nothing really kind of special in mind. You just want something that's quite strong, quite generic because it's just a flurry, it's just a bend. You don't need to do anything crazy and it sounds like this. So after the bend, which is the first verse and the overdrive distortion pedal that I'm using uh, for those bends and also the slight chucker that's going on there, we move on to the second verse where I switch the sounds up from my overdrive to take it down a bit to my blues pedal. Because I use this in the synth intro sound, I crank that all the way up, I still use that sound, but the way to get away from having it quite all the way open is to roll the level off either from my guitar or using my volume pedal. Now I said earlier that I had my overdrive distortion pedal geared towards more of a distortion sound where that's now contrasting for the second verse with my blues pedal which has a bit more of an overdrive sound. Many people who've watched this channel for a while know that I do like heavily contrasting sounds either kind of dramatically or quite subtly. The difference between my overdrive distortion and blues pedal in this particular instance isn't huge but it matters where it counts. So the sounds that I'm going for with this are much more of an overdriven sound. I do also roll off the gain as well from the guitar as well. And to go a little bit further, I actually use both pickups on, on my guitar. The single coil sustainer has quite a kind of a jangly sound that, com that does complement the humbucker sound as well to give it this kind of like overall kind of like strong but still kind of quite jangly tone. I literally only use this sound for this part of this particular song, both for Muse songs, both for when I do other covers as well, both for when I'm writing my own music. The vast majority of the time, I don't really enjoy using the middle bridge pickup for the guitars that I have. The other exception being any kind of U2 sound, because that's a quite signature edge sound, but also in terms of the lens of Muse, um, Big Freeze is where I do use both pickups to get that extra jangly tone. So really this is quite a deep cut and the kind of a rarity for me to use both pickups, but it's really quite dramatic that change in sound and the subtle differences and that heavy contrast works really well for this kind of subdued part of the song in, in verse two. And it sounds like this. So for that, for that part of the song, it's just octave, just going up and down, just again, mirroring what is going on in the record, not doing anything too crazy. My idea for this particular sound that I'm trying to achieve is a bit more in line with how it sounded live, especially when it first came out. The song was, was first being demonstrated during the Resistance tour. As it's evolved, it's become a little bit more streamlined, but I like that kind of rough and ready kind of jangly tone that, that Matt originally got. So now we're gonna move on to the first chorus for Uprising. And in the original version of the song, there is no guitar outside of the chucker that you can still hear very, very, very subtly in there. Outside of that, there was no guitar. My approach for this is that I want something to play and not get too bored just by not playing anything. So I take the chords that we'll see later on in chorus two and just break them down a bit. Just roll off all the gum, um, keep the gain rolled off, maybe use the bridge, just the bridge pickup or keep both pickups selected. And just kind of bend up to those strings and then just strum them once, just let them ring out. Um, it creates quite a nice dynamic and a quite nice kind of range in there. If you wanted to go a little bit further, you could add some delay in there just to kind of keep that space going on, really elongate those sounds, just add some more character to it. It's completely coming away from what's on the original record. It's now getting into the realms of what can you do to enhance this song using the tones that we're going to be using throughout the song to try and recreate some of these sounds. So it's kind of keeping the sounds that we've got at our disposal using for this song, but trying to come up with something a little bit more original, a bit more kind of crazy out there. It's an approach that I really like doing. It's, uh, it really kind of opens up my mind to try and be a bit more original when I'm playing covers and so on. And that little bit of flair of creativity is never a bad thing. It makes it a little, it makes this version of the song that you're gonna play a bit more yours, how your interpretation of this as opposed to trying to replicate these sounds and play and performances like for like, which is never really my approach. I like to have my own flair with any song that I play, and for this part of Uprising is mine. So let's move on and look at the second chorus for Uprising. So I'm actually still using the same patch as I had before with the with the second verse, even though on my ESA I'm still actually labeling it chorus because it's broadly the same sound that I want. 
The only difference is that I'm really using here is not rolling off a lot of the game with the guitar or the volume pedal. It's now fully open, it's as loud as it can be. Still using both pickups, but um, the nature of my blues pedal that I've got, when you really open everything up and really go for it with strong strums and you know not rolling off gain, it really does open up. It has a lot more bite and crunch to it. It's quite a dynamic pedal for it, and it's perfect for kind of getting quite um, a controlled levels of sounds just by simple things like rolling the gain off. I, again, as before, I, I'm it's all the gain on the pedal itself is ramped all the way up. I'm not doing anything else to it. It's exactly the same, and it sounds like this. <laughs> So as you can hear there, it's quite interesting. Uh, it's not as kind of outrageous as a normal, properly overdriven sound guitar would be, or a distorted one. Uh, the idea for that for me is that I, anything heavier, uh, or I think with a bit more kind of a darker tone to it, I would start to lose the accuracy of the kind of the changes of the chords. Um, they wouldn't be as clear to me. So it's something to kind of like think about when you're putting a sound together to try and sound like uprising. The chords that are used there are quite quick paced, they're punchy. You want it to come through clearly so you can hear the notation within each chord. It's quite important for that. Just having a wall of sound, a wall of noise, is not going to do you any favours this part of Uprising. So do not use a generic distortion sound for this. Do lean much more towards an overdrive tone. You still get that nice bite and crunch, but you, you still retain some of that clarity within the intervals in the chords. Just something to think about there. That sort of approach for songs, for not just Muse, but songs quite generically across the board, that sort of approach will stand you in good stead when you want to get a nice clear guitar tone, but still have some bite behind it. It's a good compromise for two sides of, of the argument and it works really really well. So now we're done with the choruses and the verse for this point and we're going to move on to the kind of main focus of Uprising which is of course that riff. Now my setup for this part of the song is quite simple. I take my guitar signal, split it in the boss ES8. On one side is my big muff, on the other side is my overdrive distortion and my phase nighty on the end of that signal. So we have a clear good broad sound of good chunky tone from the big muff Love a big muff, it's, it works really well for rift bass sounds for a lot of bands, but particularly for Muse, it works really well for me. To my ear, it's perfect. The overdrive distortion, is, as I've got said for many of these sound like videos, it's my favorite kind of go-to distortion sound. It lends itself really well to various sounds that I want to achieve. Putting those two sounds together works really, really well to get a good layer of sounds going on. And the Phase 90 app works really well to add a little bit of flair a bit more creativity going on there as well. Um, I had to pick whether to go with the overdrive distortion or the big muff, and I chose to put the phase on the overdrive just because I wanted to not compromise on the kind of low grunty grumbliness from the big muff. Um, having those mid tones from the overdrive B phase works really, really well, and it sounds like this. <laughs> This sort of sound uh, appears quite a lot in my generic kind of guitar patches that I have when I play my own music and various other things I just want to play around. It works really well for bringing out good riff based stuff. There might be an argument to just have just the big muff or just the overdrive distortion for one or for particular types of sounds, but since having the Boss ESA, I've really enjoyed starting to play around and experiment with layering pedals together and this particular sound without the phase on it is quite a, a staple for my setup that I like to just play around with. Um, layering pedals together and really um, leaning on their specialties and their strengths goes a long way to thicken out your sound and taking that a step further in my just going way off kind of kilter on this. Um, I layer a lot of my amps within my amp rig, my amp simulation setup to kind of really dial in good ranges of sounds that I've got. I am not a huge fan of now just having one pedal and one amp. It's quite limiting. Um, it's 
quite tricky to get the specific sounds that you'd want. The advantage that I have is that I can layer things quite well. And for this part of the song in Uprising, you want a good, strong, solid sound. Um, conversely, on the record, the sound is actually quite subdued. It's, a, it's, it's on a neck pickup, I think, I believe it's on like a single coil, or it sounds like that. And definitely, certainly on a, on a neck pickup. Um, and the tone is just quite a strong, overdriven sound to my ear. But I much prefer a live, dynamic sound for this. And this sound, for me, works really, really well. If you wanted to mirror the sound that's on the record, use the neck pickup, use an overdrive, use something like the overdrive distortion that I've got, maybe but leaning a bit more towards the overdrive sound and just kind of having fun with that. No modulation, just a straight solid, forward solid sound, but I much prefer the approach that I've got. Just throwing everything else out and just going big works every time. So now we're going to be looking at the final section to break down in Uprising, which is the third chorus, which comes after the riff. You might think to just use the same chorus sound as we had before, which is for, for me, which is just the blues pedal turned all the way up. Good, nice, strong, overdriven sound in there. Maybe using both pickups again. You could do that, but to my ear, the song here, apart from at the tape at the very end, the song kind of grows over time. It has more to say and more to shout about and more things going on. To go back down to that tone from the outrageous bombastic sound that we've had for the riff, it's kind of counterintuitive to that, so I like to push that envelope even more. So in terms of the setup that I've got for this, I take my signal, split it in two, one side has the blues pedal on it and the other side has my overdrive distortion. If we, as I said with the previous section, in terms of that riff based sound is quite a solid staple. This sound particularly is my go-to generic rhythm tone. In this configuration specifically with the blues pedal turned all the way up and the overdrive distortion kind of either in the middle or leaning a little bit more towards the distortion side of things. It For me, it works really well as a good solid rhythm tone, not trying to do anything too crazy, but support the rhythm, which is what I call it, my rhythm tone. The other way that I push the idea that the sound is bigger and it's evolved, as well as using the pedals, is to look at what's going on with the guitar. Um, I use only the bridge pickup, the sound is open all the way up, volume's all the way open, and I don't actually have the kind of like uh, tight and kind of stop start nature of the chords that I had for um, for chorus two. Um, it's now just fully open, I just kind of use it more of a as a kind of a smooth rhythm part. So the energy is there the whole time, you don't lose any of it. It's a lot stronger. Bearing, uh, keeping that in mind with the kind of the louder kind of vocals for the chorus as well really kind of leans into that idea that it's a bit more of a kind of marching tone. Just something to keep in mind, it's quite fun to play around with those sorts of ideas. If you don't want to do that approach, you can go entirely back to the kind of chorus sound, entirely up to you, but this is how I sound it. <laughs> So there we go, that's how to sound like Uprising in its entirety. As usual with these sounds, I've taken the idea of the original song itself and kind of given it my little bit of a twist. The bare essentials of the sounds that are in there are the ones that I would uh, suggest that you try and achieve and try and chase after to get a sound that's that will work really well to sound like Uprising. The extra flares that are in there are like a stronger riff tone and playing around with the production of the sound for the third chorus is entirely optional but it gives you these sorts of ideas that I have when I'm putting my covers together, how to kind of make it sound a little bit different, a little bit more engaging to give you, the audience, the idea to think what can you do to enhance your guitar tone. For me, it certainly is quite an interesting and fun song to play because there's quite a range of sounds that are going on in there, but my kind of like synthy sound to a kind of a, a jangly verse tone, a, gen uh, a good solid chorus tone, an amazing riff tone, and at the end, the generic riff tone that I use all come really well together to make a good solid sound and it's the good sounds for you to uh, try and achieve. You don't have to try use the pedals that I've got but just go after the sorts of pedals and sorts of sounds that I've described to go for an overdrive tone, a big muff kind of low, uh, low rumbly grunty dirty tone 
and so on. Just have fun with it. But in the meantime, I would love to know what you thought about this video of what you liked about it, maybe what you didn't like about it. Um, any suggestions for future Sunlight videos would be greatly appreciated. Uh, the whole idea of these videos is a service for you guys. If there, sounds, if there are sound like videos that you want, let me know and I will do my best to put those together. So until next time, I've been Harry and thanks for watching.